I wasn't planning on making another video for a while, but I got a comment where someone asked me to show them how to aim with a barrette. So I'm just going to take a quick break from my practicing to make this video, and it should be helpful for both players who don't camp and for those who do. So this is just a quick little video with tips on like the main parts about aiming with a barrette, so it should be helpful for most newer players or players who haven't really used a barrette very much. So if you think I missed anything, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments and I hope you enjoy. And for all the new players watching, I hope this helps you out. So right now the barrette is a one-shot weapon, but only as long as you hit the torso or anything above the torso. So the barrette's a fantastic weapon, as long as you can hit your shots. So I'm going to break this video into five parts. Each part will contain a main topic, and at the end of the video, I'm going to join a match and put all the aspects I talked about together to show you what it should look like when you're using um, the barrette properly in a match. Now, like I just said, um, for the barrette to be a consistent one-shot weapon, you have to actually hit their torso or above. So that's what we're going to be focusing on in the first section, how to do that. So when you're using the barrette, you need to recognize that the player you're aiming at might move. And because of that, you want to aim slightly above the center of their torso. So not directly at the center of their torso, but slightly above it. Because you need to remember that if you hit their legs, you won't reliably kill them. So by aiming for their upper torso, if they move down, you'll still hit their head. And if they move up, you'll still hit their torso. So this way you can kind of reliably make a one shot um, no matter which way they move. And I mean, when you're doing this, you'll still miss from time to time. But I, I find it's a good way to kind of make all your shots pretty consistent and reliable. And when I say, you know, aim slightly above the torso center, I do mean slight. Be careful not to aim too high or you'll miss in the opposite direction. So in this section, I'm going to be stressing the point of lining up your shots properly and explaining to you why this is a really big deal. So you need to have kind of like a mental process when lining up your shots. Try and aim for, you know, their upper torso generally. And if you miss or they survive, be ready to switch to your secondary weapon. Really though, if you're taking the time to aim properly, you won't miss that much. So lots of players rush to the process of aiming their shots and, you know, they just see an enemy and then shoot in their general direction and then they miss or they hit the leg. But if you actually line your shots up properly, I mean, you can get them before they can really do any damage to you. Like I mentioned in my last video, you have to walk before you can run. So you might be a bit slow at first when you're trying to line up your shots, but you need to aim well before you can aim quickly. So lots of players try to skip this step and then they try to start, you know, aiming quickly right away. But that's not really how progression works. And that's why you see a lot of players missing their shots with barrettes. Um, you can't perform advanced skills if you don't understand the basics yet. You need to get into the habit of shooting their torso consistently, and then after you've mastered that, you'll slowly get quicker and quicker as you practice and time goes by. And if you want to do well, I mean, you don't, take, don't try and take shortcuts. Focus on the basics and then build from there. So for the third part of this video, we have to talk about the recent accuracy nerf Barrett received because that's really important and it makes a big impact and um, that we have to kind of counterbalance. So currently, after taking damage, your accuracy is like pretty drastically reduced for about two seconds. And it's possible this will be changed or updated out in the future, but for now, it is the case. So um, basically, this means that when you're using barrette and you're, if you're facing a rapid fire weapon, you have two options. One, you can take them out before they can unload their fire into you, really, which is especially easy to do if you're camping because you can usually see them before they see you. Um, but for your second option, you can also just switch to a secondary weapon or use throwables to defend yourself while you're taking damage. Since right now, um, the barrette and the carbine are the only weapons this accuracy nerf is applied to, so it won't impact your throwables or um, your secondaries right now. So whether you're camping or playing normally, um, while you're using a barrette, you need to try and deal with rapid fire weapon users quickly if you can. And if you just took damage, it's you, you want to kind of wait like two seconds before you're shooting back with your barrette or switch weapons because otherwise you're just going to miss. And again, this could be changed in the future. 
I mean, they might make it so the um, accuracy difference isn't that drastic, but right now it's a really big deal. So when you are aiming with a barrette or using a barrette, it's really all or nothing. I mean, you either hit your target or you don't hit them. Accuracy is really important. So when you're calm, you're obviously able to be a lot more accurate. So here, as cheesy as it sounds, we're going to be talking about the importance of staying calm during a match. Because it really is important. So while you're aiming with a barrette, you really need to stay calm or you won't be as accurate. You need to take the time to make sure you aim properly and you line up your shots. Don't just randomly shoot because someone is near. You need to stay calm and focused or your accuracy really will suffer. Now, I'm not just making this up. There have been tons of actual scholarly studies showing that when people are not calm, they do worse in almost any given activity. This is a mistake that I see people do all the time in Ninja.io. I mean, people will be facing a good player or they'll get close to winning, so then they start panicking or losing their cool, and then they lose the match. Or they're like, you know, oh, I'm going to defeat you this match and stuff, and then they do even worse than they did in the last one. Like, it's not to say you can't do well when you're frantic, but you're not reaching your full potential or doing as well as you would be if you were calm and focused. And something else that you get out of being calm that you don't, you can't really get when you're frantic is when you're calm and you make a mistake or, you know, you get killed or something, instead of blaming people and being like, oh, they're just camping, they're just spamming, you know, oh, it was just because I was in a bad situation. Like, you'll actually be able to recognize what you did wrong instead. And by recognizing what you did wrong, you can figure out what you can do to improve and then, you know, practice it and improve. Like, when you're not calm, it's a lot harder to notice your own mistakes and you just focus on, like, other people's mistakes. And then it's more difficult to actually get better, which, you know, is the goal. So on to the fifth topic, I actually wanted to talk about two things. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is bullet tracking with the barrette. I believe this also works with the carbine. So if you actually hold click, your screen will fall. I'm not sure if this works on iPad or laptop, but it works on computer. So if you actually hold click when you shoot with a barrette, it tracks your bullet and follows your bullet across the map. Now this is an intended feature, it's meant to be this way. But when the new players first discover this, they, I notice, like to really, you know, use it a lot and stuff. But I'm here to tell you, you have to be careful with it because when you use bullet tracking too much, I mean, yeah, you're following your bullet and you're scouting ahead, sure. But while you're doing that, you're also completely oblivious to all your surroundings and you'll die while you're doing it. Especially um, a lot of campers who discover this think, you know, oh, it'll make my camping so much better. But you have to be really careful with it um, because really that's... Something that you only really use if like you're camping and nobody's coming to your spot, so you just want to scout the terrain. Another spot you might use bullet tracking is say if you're camping in a very flat map and you have a very high position, um, other than just using it for scouting if nobody's coming to your spot. You can also use it to kind of, you know, try and get some random kills. You know, you can just use it a little bit, figure out, okay, where can I shoot to um, uh, hit a spot where lots of players are and then you can just randomly shoot in that area until somebody comes to your spot but again you have to be careful with overusing it because even if nobody's near your spot while you're using it if you're busy reloading and then somebody comes well now you're in trouble so you have to be careful about not overusing bullet tracking especially when you're camping it's a big mistake that lots of campers do so you need to be careful with it the next part is a bit of personal experience, but um, so you might, you know, have a different view on it. But I think for most new players, you're going to want to try and stay grounded while you're shooting if you can, because it is easier to shoot shots from the ground than it is to do in the air because there's just less variables. You know, things are more stationary and you just have to think about the enemy's movement and not your own and then just focus on aiming. So if you can get grounded, get grounded. Okay, now it is time to bring together everything we've been talking about and join a match and try and, you know, use these things that I've been talking about. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoy the example and uh, hopefully it helps. Mm -hmm.